Hey, this is Jerry from Blizz Studio, and in this Playmaker and Unity tutorial, we're going to set up our third person character. We're also going to set up the new input system as well. Now, if you're ready to get started, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Unity, and we want to go ahead and start setting up our player so that we can move, and we're going to set up so that we can look around the player as well. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to set up the new input system. If you don't have that installed, how do you install it? You go to the package manager and then you can type in input. And then right here you have the new input system. I already have it installed, but if you haven't had it installed yet, then you need to go ahead and install it. And then it's going to ask you to restart your editor. I'm going to go ahead and close this because I already have it installed. So let's go and take a look at the new input system. So I have a folder already that's called input. You can name it whatever. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a new input actions. And I'm going to go ahead and just call this player. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And then with this, you can see that we have a bunch of different columns here. The very first one is our action maps. And with these action maps, you can have these applied to a lot of different things. So the player in water, the player flying, the player moving, the player moving, etc. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and just create one for player. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a new action map and I'm just going to call it player. Then we've got in the next column, the actions. So these are where we're going to apply what keys we're going to bind to do certain things. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and select this first one and call it just move. Then over in the next column, we have what do we want to map this to? So in this case, instead of button, I want to choose to have it map a value. And then it's going to ask what type of value. In this case, I'm going to do a vector two. And with that, I can set up both controllers and my WASD and my arrow key to use the vector two from those buttons. Cool. So now that we have the action set up, we actually need to get the values from those certain keys. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the plus of the move. I'm going to go ahead and do a composite. So we're going to add up, down, left, and right. All right. And I'm going to call this first one, my arrow keys. Then we also have this extra binding here. We can go ahead and just delete that because we don't need it. And then now what I need to do is to go ahead and bind each of the keys with the up, down, left, and right. Super easy to do. So if we click on the up, if we go over to the path, I'm going to just hit listen, hit my up key, and then you're, there you see up arrow. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to go ahead and just do the rest real quick. Okay, so now we have our arrow keys all bound up. Now, we also want to do the WASD keys. Now, I highly recommend that if you're doing key bindings, that if you do the movement for WASD, which is the normal, also do the, the arrow keys. The reason being is that there's some people that use our left-handed, some people that are right-handed, and it's I always recommend that if you set up WASD, also set up your arrow keys. So in this case, I've set up my arrow keys first, but we definitely need to go ahead and do WASD as well. So I'm going to add a new binding. So I'm going to select move again. We're going to add a new composite again, and I'm going to call this WASD. And then with that, I need to go ahead and rebind those keys. So I'm going to select my up again, listen for my W key, and then I'm going to go ahead and set up all the rest. Boom, so there now I have the WASD keys. Now, I did mention controllers. We can set up controllers super easy with the new input system as well. So I have a wired Xbox controller, but you can use a PlayStation controller. Any controller you have, you will be able to set up. So again, I need to do a new binding. You could use a composite. I'm just gonna go ahead and just add binding. And in this case, the binding that we're gonna add I'm going to go ahead and just select gamepad. We're going to use our left stick. So we're going to use our left stick for movement. So those are all set up for our move. Now I have auto save selected. So anytime I make a change, it's automatically going to save this. If you don't have auto save selected, make sure you save before you close this window. Cool. So now that we have our input system set up, now let's go ahead and set up the player. Right now I have just a model in the game and I need to go ahead and actually set my player up. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create an empty game object and I'm going to call this player. 
Now I do have this model in the, in the scene, but I'm gonna take this model and stick it inside the player game object. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that my player game object is at the same location as my model. So to do that, it's super easy. I'm gonna select my model, and then I'm gonna go over here to the transform of that model. I'm gonna copy the world position. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back over to my player, and then I'm also going to paste the world position. So that way both my player and my model are in the exact same location. Then I'm just going to take my model and I'm going to just drag it right inside a player. So we have that set up. Now the next thing I need to do is to go ahead and add a character controller to our player. So I'm going to add component and character controller. There we go. And with this character controller, I do not need to add a collider because a collider is part of it. I need to fit this collider to my model. So we can see that there is a height here. And with this particular model, it's about 1.7 meters high. And then I want to change the radius so it's a lot thinner to match the model. So about 0.2. And then I also need to offset it. The base of the collider is at the base of the feet. So that's about 0 0.89, 0 0.88. There we go. So now we have our character controller set up. Super easy. The next thing I wanna do is to set up Cinemachine. Cinemachine is going to allow me to do a lot of different things. So in this case, what we need to do is to add the Cinemachine package. So if you go to your package manager and with the Unity registry, you type in Cinemachine, you can see that you can download this and I already have it downloaded and installed, so I'm gonna close my package manager. Now with that, we can go ahead and set up a Cinemachine. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and then Cinemachine and then we're gonna add a free look camera. So with this free look camera, we're gonna be able to look around our character without having to move our character. Okay, so now that we've added our free look camera, we need to go ahead and do a few things to set this up. If you're using the old input system, you won't have any problems with this. If you're using the new input system and you try to use this, you're gonna have an error. So to fix that error, it's super easy. All you need to do is to add the new input provider. Now right here in Cinemachine Free Look, you see add input provider. So go ahead and just add that. And then it adds this Cinemachine input provider script as a component below. Okay, so there's a few other things we need to do. One, we need to go ahead and have our camera look at our player. So to do that, the, the Cinemachine camera is going to control the main camera. So everything we need to do is with the free look camera. So the first thing we need to do is to what game object do we want to follow? So we're going to follow our player. Then we also need to ch choose the player to look at. And then the next thing I need to do is to go ahead and I'm going to invert my Y axis and then I'm going to uncheck invert my X axis. Then below that we have three rigs. So these are radiuses that are around the, the player at different levels. And this is where the camera will rotate the very top, the middle, and the bottom. So we can choose to set up how close that is to our player and how far it, far it is away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set my top rig height. I'm gonna set that up to be about three meters. The height is about three meters, so about three meters above the player. And then the radius I'm gonna have as three. And with the middle rig, I'm gonna choose two here, and then the radius as four, so it's a little bit further out. And then the bottom rig, I'm gonna have this about 0.7, and then the radius of about three as well. Then the next thing I need to do is I'm gonna take the aim. So if we look at where it's at with the player, I need to go ahead and move the camera up. Now to do that, we can easily just go into our aim and then we just change the Y value. So I'm gonna change that to about one. I need to make sure that the axis is rotated so it's behind our player. And so what, what I'm gonna do is just to change my X axis value. So I'm gonna rotate this so that we're behind our player and boom, there we go. So now we have our Cinemachine all set up. So let's go ahead and hit play real quick. And boom, now you can see that we can actually look around the player. But we actually have a problem. And that problem is that our camera can actually clip through the terrain so we're seeing underneath the terrain. So to fix that, that's a really easy fix. Well, we're gonna select our free look camera 
And down below, you can see we've got an option for extensions. So we're going to add a Cinemachine Collider. Now that we've added that, if we hit play again, boom, we no longer have that problem. We can't actually clip through the terrain. Cool, now that we have that set up, let's make our player move. And to do that, we're, we're gonna select our player and I'm going to add a Playmaker FSM. So let's add an FSM. And first, I'm gonna label this. And with this first state, I'm gonna call this player move as well. We set up our input system with player move. We're gonna get that vector information. We're gonna get that vector information from all of those different inputs, the WASD, the arrow keys, and our controller, and we're gonna be able to use that to move our player. To do that, I'm gonna type in player input, and then we have a bunch of different options here, but one of those is player input get move vector. So we're gonna go ahead and add that action, and then it's saying, hey, you need to have an input system on this game object. So let's go ahead and just click on the red box. Now with that, we also need to go ahead and add the action map that we have that we created earlier. So I have this one called player. And then with that now, down in the up input action, we can choose the action that belonged to that action map. So with that, we have player move. So I'm gonna use that action. And now anytime I use those keys, WASD, arrows, and my, con my left control stick, so we're getting that information. Now we need to store it. So we're gonna store the move vector here. So we're gonna create a new variable and I'm just gonna call this move. Cool, now that we're gathering this information, we need to actually move the player with that information. So with that, I'm gonna use a controller simple move. So we have a character controller, we're gonna move the character with that controller. Controller simple move, and I'm gonna have that be below my player input because we wanna get the values, then we wanna use the values. So here it's saying move vector. What variable do you wanna use? Well, we are using the move variable. So here we're storing that information, we're getting that information and storing it, here we're gonna actually use it. And I'm gonna change the speed to be about five, and we're gonna choose world space, and then we now should be able to move our player. So let's go ahead and give this a test real quick. So here you can see I, can, I am moving my player and I can move left and right, but we're actually not turning the player. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is to add a smooth look at direction. So we wanna be able to rotate our character based off of where we are moving and looking. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose smooth look at direction. The first thing we wanna do is we're gonna use the values that we're getting from our inputs. So I'm gonna to choose to use move because here we are storing that information as move and we're gonna use it here. The next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna uncheck my up vector and I'm gonna have my up vector be one. So what we're gonna do is that's going to allow us to rotate around the y-axis of our player. The rest of the information we can leave alone. The one more thing that we need to do, and that is in our player input get move vector. The other thing we wanna do here is to add a relative to, and that's gonna to be to our main camera. So let's give this a test. So I'm gonna use my controller, my right stick, I can look around, and with my left stick, I am moving my player. There you go. Hey, hope you enjoyed that tutorial on something you can use for your game. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.